everybody! This video is on the topic of puppy socialization. You can thank my KikoPup members for this video because they chose this topic in one of the members' polls. If you'd like to find out more about how to become a member of channel KikoPup, you can click the join button under any of my videos or click the link in the description below. Nowadays, I like to use the safest and most predictable ways to socialize puppies. This really means you need to be in control of your puppy's environment and break the socialization up into steps that make it easy for your puppy to have positive experiences as well as cope. When I first began my training career around 16 years ago, I used to think of puppies as these little blank canvases that you could shape into who they are by the experiences that they have and the training that you do with them. However, after traveling the world and meeting tons of experts in my field, veterinary behaviorists, researchers, I have changed my mindset about puppies. When you get your puppy at eight weeks, there's so much that so much baggage that they might already have due to their genetics, their personality, the experience that they had in the womb, and the experience that their parents had, and how the personalities and the genetics of their grandparents and great grandparents are all feeding into who that puppy is and their personality. So, as trainers, we love to have this idea of of not labeling dogs and not labeling people um, and, and really believing that behavior is changeable, which it is, but each dog is going to be different and each puppy is going to be different. Some puppies are going to be extremely easy to socialize. They're going to be happy-go-lucky. You can drop them into any situation and they're going to thrive and cope. Where other puppies, they have this baggage that they already have and they're not going to cope. You drop them into the same situation as another puppy and it's just going to traumatize them or they're going to sensitize um, and, and not ever want to be in that environment again. The way that I like to think about it is um, people are all different in how they learn and how they experience the world and so for me, a long, long time ago, before I became a dog trainer, I had hoped to become a marine animal trainer. And before I could do that, I had to take a scuba diving course and then a scuba diving test. Now, uh, the way that the teacher uh, was teaching us was first, the first day we learned how to, how to scuba dive in a swimming pool and I did great. Then the next day we had to scuba dive in the ocean and we went down 30 feet and I was barely able to cope. And then after 30 feet, the instructor wanted us all to go down 60 feet and it was too fast for me. And because I tried to go further than I could and the steps weren't bro broken up small enough and I proceeded too quickly, I had a panic attack and then I just swam to shore and I was like, I never want to go underwater ever again in my life. So um, I know as a trainer now, that if I had taken lessons from another instructor who had broken, broken the steps up small enough for each of the students, that I could have gone down 60 feet, but it would have taken me longer to get there than the other students who were doing just fine, um, able to swim in the murky water where they couldn't even see their hands in front of them, down 60 feet below the sea, that was fine for them, but it was not fine for me, and, <laughs> and sure, I'd like to try again with a different instructor, but the same goes with socializing puppies. Your neighbor might say, oh, my puppy was a little bit scared at first, but then I just, you know, I just had him with these other dogs and then he's fine. You should do the same. But all puppies are different. So if somebody gives you advice about what they did with their puppy, they're basically telling you how to train their puppy, not your own puppy. So what I like to do is to use a safe approach to socialization. Instead of just dumping the puppy 60 feet under the ocean like the scuba diver instructor did to me, um, you're going to go in approximations and as the puppy succeeds, you push the criteria. So you might have visitors come to your house to meet your puppy at first, 
rather than just taking your puppy to the park and seeing if he likes strangers and then, oh no, he's barking and hiding and shaking and running from the strangers. You have, a, you have some visitors come to your house and the, how social is your puppy? Is your puppy warming up to them immediately? Is your puppy wagging? Is your puppy overexcited to see them? Are there any times that your puppy's seeming shy or nervous of the person? If your puppy is seeming like he's not warming up quickly and doesn't immediately like the person, then I wouldn't have that puppy meet people out and about in a park because what can happen is a negative experience could happen where the puppy's like, oh no, that was scary, I don't like that person right now. Uh, and then the person has to go away because they're busy with their own life and their own day, their own day and they're not gonna stick around to help you train your puppy. So if you have people come to your house, they can stay long enough that you hopefully can build a positive experience with the person's visit. Some advice that people give that worked with their own dogs might not work for yours. Some examples are that they carried their puppy and had people pet their puppy to teach their puppy to be okay with people touching them. Now, if you have your dog on a leash or you're restraining your dog and people or dogs approach your dog while on leash or being restrained, your puppy can't escape. So he's basically trapped there and for some puppies, they can habituate and they're like, oh, that wasn't so bad at all. Um, where other puppies, um, if, you're, if you're restraining them or they feel restrained by being on leash and people and dogs are approaching them rather than they are approaching the person or dog, they can, they can actually sensitize and start to dislike people and dogs approaching. So if your dog's scared to go to someone, you're not gonna take your dog and give them to the person. You want to socialize your puppy where your puppy is choosing to have a positive experience with someone. So if your puppy is a little nervous of a dog or a person, the best thing you can do is have that person move away from your puppy and entice your puppy to move towards them. So an example of that would be you go on a walk and the person's ahead of you or the person has a friendly, mellow dog and they're walking ahead and your puppy's building confidence following that dog um, rather than your puppy being stationary, say behind a fence at a dog park and the dogs are running up towards your puppy. It's much better to have a very predictable environment at first so you can build on successes where say your puppy's first following the other dog, then walking next to the other dog, then walking towards each other, arcing around, and it's becoming a safe environment because the puppy is expecting what's gonna happen next rather than a chaotic scene of dogs just running around or um, dogs or people approaching the puppy where it can start to build a sense of worry about the, the approach of these um, other life forms. Mindful socialization means setting up the environment for success to reinforce the social behaviors you want and create a positive emotional response. Approach socialization as if you're training a behavior. Break the training up into small, easily achievable steps. The puppy's prior history and genetics will determine how fast you move through those steps. Mindful puppy socialization. Set up the first experiences to be easy and fun for the puppy. If the puppy is confident and relaxed, increase social interactions mindfully. If the puppy seems stressed or doesn't quickly recover, go back a step to where the puppy is comfortable. Have guests come to your home. Meet them outside if your puppy startles easily at people entering your home. This will prevent the puppy learning to bark when people come over. If your puppy is reserved around guests, don't have the guests feed the treats as it can cause a puppy to feel conflicted. Instead, you can feed your puppy treats for interacting with the guests. Halo, my own puppy, was a little bit shy with men at first, so I made sure to have men visit my house as guests rather than hope that Halo would have a positive experience with men out and about in the environment. I also had meetups with dogs that were calm and friendly. Meet up with friends and family at different locations when your puppy is confident and friendly meeting guests at your house. If your puppy is still slow to warm up, you can have the puppy meet the people he already knows when out and about.
Here's some footage of Halo meeting a friend of mine and her son in the park. You can make it a positive experience for your puppy by at first letting your puppy choose to approach people as well as having the people move away from your puppy and entice your puppy to move towards them. If your puppy is overexcited by people, instead you can go places and work on a calm settle while sitting at a table together. Less than two weeks ago, right? Good boy, Pepsi. What I see is how tall he got. Oh, yeah. 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 His legs are really pictures. We also went on meetups with dogs to practice calm settles. In conjunction with socializing your puppy to people and animals, you can take your puppy on outings to different environments, focusing on calm walks and settles to take in the environment rather than greeting strange people and dogs. You can greet dogs and people when out and about with some puppies, but it can create unpredictable and sometimes negative experiences. It's much safer to meet up with people and dogs you know first. Here's some footage of me working with Halo on a calm settle near a lake where I'm reinforcing him for calmly watching dogs pass. And here's a calm, sniffy walk where the leash is nice and loose. Work on training new behaviors at home in a non-distracting environment first. This will create stronger conditioned responses than training in distracting environments when your puppy is less interested in food. After initial training at home, the games I like to focus on during outings to build calmness and connection with me are attention games, settles, and calm loose leash walking. Here's some footage of Halo and I playing an attention game together on one of our first outings in the park, and you can see I'm really building that connection and interest of him wanting to be with me when out and about. If your puppy is not that interested in food when out and about, don't keep trying to feed your puppy or train your puppy with food because you can actually reduce their interest in wanting to eat food when out and about in the future. Arrange the environment for successful and positive first experiences. Here you can see I put a non-slip rug in the bathtub and sat down in the tub with Halo and allowed him to explore as his first experience in the bath. You can bring your puppy's mat to the vet as well. By arranging the environment, you can create positive experiences where the puppy can feel safe and confident. Here you can see Halo is watching young children eat snacks from behind a barrier. In my professional opinion, based on the trainings of Madeline Gabriel, I think it best to teach young children and young puppies to be calm in each other's presence. You can check out the link in the description below for more information on dogs and babies. Here you can see a fun game my cousin's daughter invented to play with Halo where it's a positive experience for both the dog and the child. If your puppy hasn't had all of his vaccinations yet, it doesn't mean you need to limit socialization. You can take your puppy out in a stroller, a carrier bag, or bring a large blanket to put your puppy down on when you go places. After talking to trainer Atsuko Greenwood about her program for socializing service dog puppies, it really made sense to use a stroller as one of the first steps to socialization in order to break the socialization up into small approximations where the puppy can be successful and have positive experiences. I used the stroller on socialization trips to the vet to keep my puppy safe from disease as well as to create a home away from home. The wonderful thing about using a stroller at first is other dogs and little children don't try to interact with your puppy as you're passing by. Choose the right mentors for your puppy to learn from. Take your puppy on outings with calm, friendly, and social dogs. Walk your puppy separately if you, your family, or friends have a dog who can be reactive or antisocial. When I first took Halo to an environment that was busier than the usual places we've been to, I brought Splash as a good influence. At first I had Halo at a distance from the busy environment and live music, but as I saw that he was doing so well, we moved closer. 
You can see that he feels comfortable in this environment because his ears are perky and forward. He's checking out the environment, but he's able to relax and settle. And he's also checking in with me and he's able to eat treats. Socialize your puppy to different surfaces. If you are a breeder, besides socializing the puppies to different types of people and animals, you can socialize puppies to all sorts of different sights, sounds, smells, environments, and surfaces to set them up for success. You can also take the litter of puppies to different locations with the mother to socialize them to different environments. This can be done in a way to prevent exposure to disease. Teaching the cue of paws up can help with socializing your dog to different surfaces. Here's just a little clip of me working with Halo now at 10 months old. Socialize your puppy to different objects and noises at home first before out and about. By doing this, your puppy will be able to pay full attention and the reinforcement will be of higher value than when he's out and about and distracted and not as interested in the food. Go check it out. Awesome. Check it out, puppy. Oh boy, what is that? Yeah. Oh boy. What do you do? Example of when to abort training and when to keep going in regards to excitement over something in the environment. In the next shot, the training could be making the problem worse as the puppy is too aroused. Some signs. Overexcited, stiff, lunging, not able to look away, can't look back or look down to eat a treat off the ground, and doesn't respond to cues or markers. In this shot, the puppy is calm enough to work on the problem. Some signs. She can look around at other things, look back for a marker or a cue, and can look down to sniff for a treat placed on the ground. Introducing your puppy to dogs in your household and other dogs. Now, if you have a dog that has never been around dogs or you're just not sure what your dog will do around other dogs or has acted fearful, anxious, reactive, or even aggressive towards dogs, I suggest getting help from a veterinary behaviorist or a trainer that doesn't use any forms of physical or psychological intimidation to help you with this training. First encounters. Set up the first encounters so all dogs have a positive experience when in the presence of the new dog. Control the environment to reduce stress and arousal. Don't let the encounter get to the point where one dog feels he has to intimidate or correct the other. Tips for first encounters. Begin in a neutral environment. This will be less startling for a dog who has never encountered dogs in his own home and will allow you to create greater distance if needed 
then confined to a room. Settles together. Have both dogs settle on a mat at a distance and receive positive feedback for noticing the other dog, such as verbal praise and treats. Calm walks together. Walk parallel from each other at a distance. Mark and reinforce when your dog notices the other dog. If one dog is calm, confident, and friendly with other dogs, you can have that dog walk ahead of the other dog that is unsure. After success with parallel walking, you can practice walking past each other in an arc and then past each other in a straight line. Decrease the distance if the dogs are calm and confident and increase the distance if the dogs start to show signs of stress or unease. Having the dogs settle first at a distance and then closer together is a great way to reinforce the dogs for being calm in each other's presence. What can happen if you have a puppy whose first experiences are with playing with the other dog when meeting, it can be hard to teach the puppy that the sight of the other dog isn't an invitation to play and bother the other dog. Unless you have an extremely calm, social, and confident dog, when first meeting another dog, especially in a situation that he is not used to, it can cause him to feel stressed and excited. This excitement can sometimes cause a dog to overreact or act unpredictably. So the safest method for preventing the dogs from having a negative experience during their first encounters is to break the steps up so the dogs are feeling safe and confident every step of the way. When I first got my latest puppy, Halo, he was very confident and relaxed around my own dogs, but when seeing strange dogs in the environment, he started to become a little bit timid. So what I did was meet people with calm, friendly, social dogs, and I had them walk in front of me so that Halo could follow behind and build his confidence, and I also worked on settling with the other dogs. To build a positive association with the new puppy, every time you give the puppy a treat, you give your adult dog a treat. You want to do it in that order because that means you paying attention to your puppy predicts that you give your dog a treat. If you give your dog a treat and then give the puppy a treat, the dog's not going to get as strong an association of the puppy predicting something good happening. So anytime you pet your puppy or give your puppy attention or your puppy moves and you have a dog that's worried or dislikes the puppy, you pay attention to the puppy or the puppy does something and then Good job, Wish. Then Wish gets something amazing. Hey, Wishy. Good girl. So brave. Good. Anytime you see your dog look at the puppy, when they move, you can also mark, tell them how good they are, and then give them a treat. Now, you want to make sure that the distance is far enough apart that your dog is comfortable. If your dog looks like your dog is threatening the puppy or doing warning signs or just can't look away from the puppy, and is too hyper fixated, then you need to create distance. So when they were first hanging out, Wish was on the other side of a barrier, getting used to the puppy for a couple of days before being this close and off leash. Hey Wish, good job. Good job. It really helps if you have another family member or friend to help you with this because it can be a little bit tricky to train two dogs at once. First interactions. If you're blessed with introducing dogs that are social, calm, and polite with each other, you might not need to manage the social interaction at all. Kiko, my chihuahua, is one of those dogs that I rarely have to manage at all around puppies unless the puppy is a little older and might actually hurt her by jumping on her. Splash, my 12-year-old border collie, who usually has no interest in playing with puppies, found Halo to be the perfect match for her and they play very similarly, so I didn't have to do much management at all when they were playing. If one dog is calm, confident, and friendly, and the other dog is a little bit unsure and needs more time to warm up, you can have the confident dog stand, sit, or lay down calmly, and the dog that's unsure can approach and sniff the dog from behind briefly without having to go face to face with that dog. You can feed the dog that is getting sniffed and keep a hold of his collar. If you are worried, he will suddenly turn around and go face to face with the dog that is unsure. Keep the sniffing short so no dog gets overwhelmed. Two to three seconds is a great idea. You can then cue the dog to move away with you on leash. 
Only do this with dogs that are comfortable with the exercise as some dogs do not like being sniffed when they have their collar held or when eating. Another variation is allowing a dog who is following the other one enough leash to sniff the dog he is following briefly before then creating distance. The dog in the front can be receiving treats as it happens. To set my puppy up for success, to feel confident during a positive interaction with a new adult dog named Tank, we first walked with the dogs on leash together and then practiced a settle at a distance from each other and then closer before then allowing the dogs to interact. These three of my adult dogs were extremely comfortable with being loose with the puppy right from the start because they've had so much experience with puppies. Wish, my three-year-old Border Collie, was very fearful as a puppy of dogs and people and especially of being approached and touched. She had an interest in being social, but she was terrified of being touched or having the other dog go near her face, so she would back up towards dogs. She made a lot of progress and started to socialize and play with other dogs, but then when she hit nine months old, the day that she went into heat, it was almost as though her brain reset to being extremely anxious and extremely fearful around dogs, even around my own dogs. Suddenly, she would act terrified if any of my dogs were to walk past her, let alone even approach her. Even today, she requires carefully planned introductions with dogs to prevent her having a fearful or anxious response. She was already very used to having other dogs visit my house while she relaxed behind a barrier, so it made it much easier when bringing the puppy home. I would switch between having Wish behind the barrier, watching the puppy interact with me and the other dogs, and then when the puppy needed a nap, I would put the puppy behind the barrier and Wish could be with the other dogs. At first I used a double barrier so the dogs couldn't go face to face. For some dogs, the barriers might need to be on either end of the room at first so the dogs are 10 or 20 feet away from each other. I first set up training sessions where the dogs could learn to interact through the barrier with guidance and reinforcement. Here I am throwing a treat behind Wish so I can test to see if she'd like to approach the puppy again or if she would prefer to have a break. If you have a dog that doesn't have a history of being calm, friendly, and benevolent when playing with other dogs of all ages in all situations, when introducing the new dog to your household, I don't suggest that you should just let them play together in the first few encounters and hope that nothing bad happens. The calmer the dogs are, the less likely they'll be to overreact. So by taking it slow, you can build on short, positive experiences, leaving your dog wanting more interactions with the other dog, rather than the first experience of playing being a negative experience for one of the dogs. It's a great sign if your dog initiates play in the first few encounters, but just because your dog tries to initiate play with the other dog doesn't necessarily mean that he won't suddenly feel overwhelmed when actually playing. For example, if the other dog were suddenly to do something that your dog was not expecting, like putting his paws up on your dog's back or biting at your dog playfully. If at any point a dog is getting stressed, overexcited or offering undesirable behavior, you can interrupt the dog using a positively trained cue, such as a recall, an attention noise, or the cue, leave it. If your dog is just not listening, you can separate your dogs and give them a break from each other. It's important to learn what appropriate and inappropriate play looks like in dogs, but at any time when you feel unsure, I suggest interrupting the dogs and having them take a break apart from each other or just working on the settle. Use management and prevention between encounters and interactions. Keep the dogs in separate rooms when you have to leave the house to prevent them having negative interactions while you are not home. Having the dogs in the same room with a barrier can be problematic for some dogs because they can intimidate each other or get frustrated by not being able to reach each other. 
Monitor all interactions in the first stages while the dogs are building their relationship and learning how to interact with each other appropriately. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful for your training. I just want to give a quick shout out and a thank you to Judy Patterson. Because of Kiko Pup members like her, I'm able to create this free content to educate the public on how to train dogs without the use of physical or psychological intimidation. If you'd like to become a member of channel Kiko Pup to support this channel and also gain access to the perks of becoming a member, you can click the join button below this video or any of my videos on channel Kiko Pup or follow the link in the description below. See you later guys.